Hey there, happy Tuesday. Welcome to Two for Tuesday as we are going to continue to talk about uh, school issued Chromebooks and, um, you know, talking about ways to better safeguard our kids, things to look for. Last week we talked about specific. Um, topics on involving the Chromebook, meaning what kind of monitoring apps do, does your school system have on there? Are they blocking specific apps? And are they allowing for parents to add additional monitoring apps on that in order to also try to better safeguard your kids? And so tonight we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And real quick, I'm Mo McClanahan, and I am the Director of Education and Training for Safe Surfing. And I am also an investigator at the Christiansburg Police Department where I work internet crimes against children. And honestly, the reason I brought this topic back is because in the last week, <laughs> since speaking about it last week, I've had a lot of concerns. I've gotten a lot of messages from parents and while speaking with them, a lot of assumptions and very normal. So I would think that as a parent that you would assume that certain apps or certain um, websites are being blocked on the Chromebook. But again, like I mentioned last week, and if you didn't see it, I talked about going to your school system and asking them what kind of monitoring software do they already have installed there? Because almost all school districts are doing that. I mean, they are in the business of not only educating our children, but they want to keep them safe too. And so I just want to encourage you guys to definitely reach out to them and see what they're using. I actually did the same thing and I was told what the, the monitoring system is. And for me, I'm going to do some research on it. And also I signed up for any kind of notifications if they notice some kind of questionable searches or content that is coming through to my son's Chromebook that I can monitor that through that. So that's been really helpful. Uh, on the same token, they aren't able to block apps necessarily on the device, but they can block it through the school Wi-Fi. So learning how to block certain apps when you are at home, that's really important. You have to do that through your own individual router. And I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not the best to tell you step by step how to do that, but if you Google it, I know that there are steps in YouTube that you can find ways to block specific apps. At the same time, knowing what apps to, or not apps, I'm sorry, websites, uh, with Chromebooks, everything is going to be through the browser. So just knowing what specific sites that need to be blocked, that, that's really hard to know because our kids can always kind of work around it and it's not always their fault, but if they do put in a search term inside of Google, it can take them anywhere. And so having the monitoring system through the school and being alerted through those notifications is definitely a nice guarantee, like it just a, a nice safety net for sure. But it's not going to be a hundred percent. So on top of you know finding out the so the software that's on there, ask them again if you can put on an additional software, and that way you can see everything that's going on on the device through your phone and through your system. Another thing is have some rules set in place. I remember um, last year when Chromebooks were being disseminated to the fifth graders, because that's when they started in our district, that all the kids and all the parents went to a meeting and they all signed a contract and they were explained the, the guidelines on what it uh, what kind of behavior and how they were to treat their Chromebooks and what to use it for. And I know that 
Everybody's so overwhelmed this year that I want to encourage you to do that in your own home. Set some guidelines, write them out, talk to your kids about it, have a conversation, and then have them either sign it or initial, depending on their age, will they understand that? But just always having that and display it somewhere where it's a memory all the time that you had that conversation, what some of the rules are. And then making one of the specific rules is that it's for school use only because I, ha I have been getting some cases where our school is doing an amazing job monitoring some of the search terms and some of them came up from a student that were really questionable. And so it was definitely not school related. And so having that as a rule that you're only using it for school purposes is very important. And maybe if you have an after school or a babysitter or somebody else watching your child, make sure they know what the rules are. I know that I trust my child to remember the rules when they're not at home, but children are children. So they make bad choices sometimes and um, he, my son is, does not have access to YouTube and he has to ask permission to watch something specific if it's a tutorial on something. And so when he had access to the Chromebook at the after school, he was honest and told me that he did look up YouTube and that, um, that he was looking at certain videos and he wanted to know why was it taken away from him? And we had the conversation that... Um, you can't always guarantee what those videos are going to be if they're appropriate for kids. And even though he was looking at cat videos, any evil person could post a video of them killing a cat. And I asked him, would you want to see that? Would you want to see a video of somebody killing a cat? And he said, no. And I said, I don't want you to see a video like that. So the only way that I can prevent that is to not allow you on that website. So the next couple days, he was honest, hadn't been on it, but he was going to the garbage and he overlooked some, he looked over someone's shoulder and they were on YouTube. He said, I just couldn't help it. I was just, I just glanced at it. And whatever it was that he saw was some kind of character that kind of gave him the creeps. And so, um, again, we had that conversation. If it's something that, uh, that he knows that he shouldn't be doing, that he needs to walk away. So, but always having that conversation meant that he could come to me and be honest about it. I'm not disciplining him for it. Um, he did get like docked on his allowance because, uh, he knows the rules, but it's not, I don't want, ever want it to be a time where he can't tell me and that he's afraid that he'll lose something because he's telling me, uh, but always have consequences at the same time. Again, I just wanted to hit on some of those points and, you know, give you some ideas, um, some things to think about when it comes to the Chromebooks. Again, I get it. Parents are overwhelmed. Schools are overwhelmed. Everybody is transitioning the best they can. And I just want you to know that I'm here to offer you some suggestions, give you some tips and advice, and know that you can always message us and we will get back to you with some guidelines and direct you in the right path. So hopefully that was helpful. And again, if you have questions, let us know. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday and you join us back here at 7 p.m. for two for Tuesday uh, next week. Take care.